Okay. So hello and welcome. We are pleased to have Tiffany Brown with us today. She's a prominent architect here in Metro Detroit. She acquired three degrees from Lawrence Tech University, including her master's in architecture, as well as her MBA. And she is featured recently on the movie called Design for All, where she shares with us her journey. And I highly recommend everybody watch this movie, now available on Hulu. Tiffany Brown, thank you so much for sharing your afternoon with us. How are you? I am well, Gina. How are you? Thank you for having me. Doing great. Thank you. So for people who are watching, can you share a little bit about um, like your background? Where are you from? Where do you live now? So my background, I, I am from Detroit, born and raised. I do still live in Detroit. And um, my background includes architecture, business development, um, which pretty much triggered my um, interest in getting the MBA from Lawrence Tech. But working in the field of study where I am right now or, or in my current career, I wasn't exposed to architecture growing up. Uh, someone, there was a recruiter that actually came from Lawrence Tech to my high school and talked about architecture. So my love for art and creative writing and anything related to art excellence is, uh, was actually a vehicle for me to gain some success in architecture. So it's a little bit about me. That's great. So did the degree in architecture come first and then the MBA? Like, is that how that worked? Yes, I went to... Uh, study architecture first. So I have a bachelor of science and um, a master, master's in architecture. And um, I was lucky enough to get a job at a firm in Detroit called Hamilton Anderson as an undergrad student. And um, I worked there for 11 years and I was able to work on lots of different project types and phases of the project. And I just kind of found a really huge interest in the business development side of things. It's something that um, we don't really learn much about uh, in the College of Architecture. So I decided to go back and get an MBA. And I'm really happy that I did that because the curriculum that an MBA offers just makes you much more versatile, especially when you have a specific degree of study um, like architecture. So uh, the MBA definitely came later. and. Uh, as a project manager, it, it also helps me there uh, just to really give me a boost in my management skills and leadership skills and understanding about how a business works. Yeah. I highly recommend it. Yeah, I agree. And crunching numbers, right? Making you comfortable mm -hmm. with all those uh, this important decisions and keeping on budget. Um, so as a project manager, what firm um, are you working with now, can I ask? So I, I am a project manager at a firm called Smith Group. It's the, it's the longest running architecture and engineering firm in the country um, of about 160 years. It's located in downtown Detroit in the Guardian building. Fantastic. And I also noticed that you're an adjunct professor at Lawrence Tech. So how great for you to be able to give back and influence and mentor those people that you um, were impacted by at a young age as well. So that's awesome. You know, Lawrence Tech has been a part of my life since I was 17, and I, I started as a freshman at 17 years old, and um, I feel like I was pretty unprepared uh, getting to a private school like that, especially studying architecture without having any type of uh, experience or knowledge of it. Uh, and so three degrees later, yes, I'm proud to say that Lawrence Tech has always been very supportive in all my endeavors. Uh, and to be able to teach a senior design studio uh, and teach uh, the students there about being advocates for their neighborhoods is just something like one of those things architecture has provided for me, like a, a full circle moment in my life. So yeah, Lawrence Tech and I are partners in crime. <laughs> Absolutely. And is there a story? I mean, I know that there's a story there because I was fortunate enough to watch Design for All, but maybe you could share with our viewers who haven't had a chance to see it yet mm -hmm. um, a little bit about how, you know, that story and how you were actually able to go back and um, rebuild the neighborhood that you grew up in, essentially, and bring such a positive impact. 
Yeah, you know, being affected by the built environment the way that I was, I know a lot of people really like to try to hone in on ex ex inclusive design um, and figure out what that means and how to incorporate it into their work. And for me, my experience with it was mostly exclusion, whether it be about my learning spaces or where I lived particularly. So uh, it wasn't the best neighborhood in the city at all. Um, just being there, uh, it really gave me the tough skin that I needed to be able to succeed uh, in this male dominated field that I'm working in, architecture and construction. And um, it was demolished and sat for 10 years. And in the meantime, I had gone to uh, school for architecture and Hamilton Harrison was hired to oversee construction by the housing commission um, of that. And, uh, and so I was able to work on that and other developments similar to that. There was one that has some major, major renovation work done in Flint and uh, another one that was pretty um, important to me was the demolition of the Brewster Douglas housing projects on 75 and Mac. So it was there that I realized uh, that there should be people at the table who look like me um, because these are neighborhoods where we, where we live and where we learn. Um, there were no project teams that were diverse at all, not even the construction team. So that was what triggered me into really trying to take a deep dive of why that is and why those people were not at the table. So in the documentary, Design for All, all of the stories tie together uh, and really push the point that no matter what your ability, no matter what your disability, no matter what your background, uh, all kids and adults can be designers and grow up one day and change the world. So it really highlights um, the importance of having the voice of the unheard at that table when designing. And it's not something that is you know, done by others who are coming in as the experts. So um, I had a chance to really, uh, again, dig into that when a friend of mine, Kat Holmes, who is a previous keynote speaker at, at um, Month of Design, she was researching a book on inclusive design that she, she um, left Microsoft to work on. And she came to Detroit and really did, you know, just she wanted to understand what it meant um, for the, a person who has experienced a high degree of exclusion, how to incorporate um, their voice and provide solutions uh, for the problems and the challenges that they face in her book. And the name of that book is? The name of that book is Mismatch, How Inclusion Shapes Design. And because of my chapter in that book, uh, I was able to be featured in the documentary Design for All. So it got into the hands of some producers in New York and they reached out to um, come here and film with me for three days. And they even got their hands on lots of footage that I had never seen, including my graduation footage from Lawrence Tech. So. <laughs> It was really cool to watch. And um, I was able to take away a lot of uh, things, important lessons from each of the women featured in that, in that movie. So we should also be reading the book Mismatch by Kate Holmes that features a full chapter on you, Tiffany Brown. And you do our city such, um, make our city proud because it, it really does highlight the importance of inclusion. And so what, how were you able then to build out your team to make it more inclusive? Is there something that you were able to do throughout one, at least one of these projects then to really hear the voice of the neighborhoods that you were building? Yeah, I really think that it's important, um, especially in efforts like community engagement. So in architecture, in any neighborhood that you want to build in, you have to have the buy-in from the community. Um, because they are the, you know, the people that you're serving. So in order for you to um, really connect with them, you just have to go in with an open heart. Because uh, a lot of people ask me, what do I do and how, you know, these, these, how are these changes made and, and how can um, a team be impactful? And you just have to be uh, able to just 
scale back and understand that there are people who need to feel seen and heard and heard and understood and supported and have them participate in how that project unfolds. This can apply to uh, any realm, any, any profession, um, because if you just kind of fly in with the cape, with this thing that you feel is gonna work for them because it worked elsewhere, especially in a, in a city like Detroit, it just would, will not work. Um, and so it's just making sure that you uh, come up with a, a good approach to creating some social design, um, and really just implementing, you know, that into your project, you, you would come out with a, a really awesome, um, outcome, whether it be a, a diverse team of people or the approach that you take to develop that project. I, I love it. Absolutely. And, you know, those icebreakers, some, I, you know, I like focus groups. I like it's um, especially if you can provide some good food and invite people and just be a good listener. I tell my kids a lot that, you know, a smile is a universal language, right? It's a great icebreaker, but just to be a good listener. And as you said, make sure people understand that their voice is not only heard, but that it's, it's important and that they are, mm -hmm. um, you know, an intricate part of that development. So did you have, like, what were your icebreakers? How would you bring in um, your, for your community engagement? So just making sure that people, there are questions that you need to ask, like, you know, are, are your ideas identified here? Um, have your ideas been heard? If not, what are they? We incorporate them. Uh, is this an environment where you feel like you belong? Do you feel safe? Do you feel supported in this, in this um, environment? So it's mostly, mostly uh, a lot of people always ask, you know, how do you know if you're doing it correctly? Uh, and I was actually on a call recently with um, some partners from Design Core, and uh, Cezanne made a statement that said it needs to come from a heartful place and then move into a brainful approach and you learn how to measure that. And so you just have to, depending on what the project is, you, you come up with approaches for that. You sometimes have to bring in professionals. Um, it's not always something that someone can up and do, but that is how you make the shift toward inclusion. You make it, you make a, um, a personal connection to an aspect of uh, inclusion that's meaningful to you and, and to that community. So yeah, it, it's usually incorporated in like learning and researching things that are measurable and using those as factors for decision making. Absolutely, and that was one thing um, with acquiring an MBA. I think I came out of that understanding that communication is one of the most vital components um, of any type of whether it's management or you know engagement relationships it's it's communicating and just being mm -hmm. um, as you say authentic and from the heart right and and finding common ground so tell us if you don't mind then a little bit about um, fab Sun and how that matured, because it seems like that's kind of a natural extension of just your great big heart. So there are a few different hats that I wear and they, they pretty much are all tied to mentorship of girls. And so uh, Fab Femmes is a um, program, it's kind of a matching program where professional women are paired with girls who want to learn more about their profession. So uh, we have a website, fabfilms.com, and you have women from all walks of life where they could, there's a student who's interested in, in, um, in architecture or in engineering or, you know, whatever the case is, and they don't, they want to learn more about that career, they can contact one of us and we'll jump on the phone with them or, do a presentation at their school if they're local. Uh, so it's it's mostly um, connecting girls to a, to a model program. So I also have a nonprofit called 400 Forward that is partnered with Design Core Detroit. And the name comes from, um, there are actually about 400 women who are, who are African-American licensed architects. Um, and that's not of the last five or 25 years, that's of all time, 
that is of 116,000 architects. There's, there's now 488, I believe. But at the time when I started that nonprofit, there were 400. So the, I named it 400 Forward. So uh, just to reflect that, I wanted to try to help seek out support um, the next 400, maybe double that number, even though that number is less than 1% of what our profession looks like. Um, try to change the face of architecture and make it more inclusive. Uh, and so there's also National Girls Collaborative that I'm a board member or a champions board member for. It includes women from Boeing, from Black Girls Code, from Google, from I mean, all types of major companies and entities. Uh, and then there's the National Organization of Minority Architects where I'm executive manager and um, able to connect with all kinds of students and professionals across the country. Um, yeah, so those, those are just some of the things that I'm involved in, but anything that really helps me pave the way for the next generation of girls coming behind me is where I have found my passion. It is what brings me joy. And when you, when you get to that point in life, uh, it really is not work anymore. You know, it's, it's just, you're doing what you were called to do and it let me know that the challenges that I have faced growing up with exclusion and, and with many other things are to be teaching tools for kids and even adults like um, in the documentary. So I hope everyone gets a chance to see it and, um, you know, find some takeaways from it. Tiffany Brown, that is incredible. And I love the name 400 Forward. I mean, because we know paying it forward, probably my most um, exciting jobs were actually not jobs, but volunteer work where we are serving people and helping lift people up, right? And, mm -hmm. um, you know, like that one LTU advisor that came to your high school and just saw the potential and was able to make the dots because that's, I think, you know, I, I go back to when I was in high school and I just, I had no idea the different types of careers that were available. And that's where I think um, mentorship such as both Fab Fems as well as the 400 Forward where people can actually talk and learn about all of these different opportunities and, you know, get the encouragement because a lot of us, I mean, I love my parents, don't get me wrong, but they didn't have the same background to like even, you know, my, my, my stepfather was like, oh, you're good at engineering, you should be a math major. And I was like, well, uh, you know, it's it just, I found it really boring. And it was actually the reverse. I was good at math. So he's like, you should be an engineer. And I sat through like a physics class at MSU. And I was like, you know, I don't want to do this for the rest <laughs> of my life. And so, you know, I, I've had a couple different transitions myself. Um, and that's, like you said, I've gotten to a point where we've met so many incredible people and we launched Wearology to develop hardware to help move people forward, right? And empower independence and the ability for people to express themselves in their own unique style. Mm -hmm. And it's not work. I mean, I do this a lot. It's almost, um, you know, it's just second nature now to be working on my computer and pulling these dots together. But when you know that you're doing it for a greater good, it's just, it's really rewarding. So. Tiffany, thank you so much. Is there anything else or advice that you would like to share with us um, our, before we go? Yes, uh, so I just wanted to say for all the future designers who are watching this, it is very important that people feel like they, that, they, that they feel uh, essential in your designs and we, we don't make them feel powerless and dependent. Um, how do we impact people? How are people affected by the spaces we create, by the products we design? And um, really take that into consideration and make sure everyone um, is included and can use that product. So it, access is the key to the future, in my opinion, access and design. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Tiffany Brown, thank you so much. If people want to contact you, they can go either to 400 Forward or find you at Fab Femmes, or like I found you on LinkedIn. And please, everybody watch Design for All, now available on Hulu.
Thanks, Tiffany. This has been fabulous. Thank you for having me.